Will a trip to the strange and terrifying world hold the secrets to curing Aurora Monroe's sickness? Well, let's hop into the pages of giant-sized X-Men Storm issue number one and find out together, shall we? Well, alrighty then. For those playing along at home, these giant-sized X-Men one-shots really haven't had much of an overarching plot. In fact, the only thing that seemingly ties them all together is the story of Storm. It was during a run-in with the Children of the Vault back in the very first new giant-sized X-Men from Hickman that Storm had ended up getting sick. She contracted a techno-organic virus, but no, not the cable one that you're thinking of. This sickness is going to kill her in 30 days, and because of that, she's been doing everything in her power to try and find a cure. None of the scientists and big brains in Krakoa seem to have an answer, and then you have people like Emma Frost wondering why she's so worried. Oh, what's that? You got a terminal illness? Well, la di da I guess when you die, we're just going to have to resurrect you the same way we resurrect everyone who dies on Krakoa. Why is this such a problem? And indeed, finding out why Storm feels this way and why she's rushing so hard to try and save her own life is basically the crux of this story. Now, the mutants believe the secret to curing the techno-organic virus exists somewhere inside a place called The World, but to get there, they're going to need some ringers. First up is Ned, the very strange agent of AIM, who comes along pretty much entirely because he's promised a huge chunk of change by the mutants of Krakoa, and it's through Ned that everyone else manages to meet back up with Phantom X, a person who was literally born inside the world. We had found out in the previous giant-sized X-Men that John philippe has his own very complicated reasons on wanting to return to the world. In fact, he returns there often trying to save his clone brother. It also doesn't bode well for Cypher, Monet, and everyone else, considering that every team that Jean-Philippe has ever brought inside the world with him has pretty much ended up dead. And indeed, the world is a very terrifying place, an awful simulation filled with twisted monstrosities that only grow more complex and more twisted the more time goes on. The mutants all fight valiantly, and Storm figures that she'll just use her amazing power to wipe them all off the map with a massive windstorm. The only problem is pushing herself so much aggravates her techno-virus conditions. Also, if you're wondering how the hell Storm can create a windstorm inside what is basically a highly advanced virtual reality, well, don't worry, they have a hand-wavy explanation for you. The mission is made a lot more difficult by the fact that Phantom X pretty much abandons his teammates right at the start to once again try and reconcile with his brother, who still very much does not want to leave the world for whatever reason. Now, Cypher and Ned have theorized that because the world was created to try and combine the best aspects of human and machine life together, then surely they can use it backwards to get the techno-organic virus out of Storm. And indeed, they do just that. It's a very painful process, but it's during that time we actually get to hear Storm's own internal monologue about why she was willing to put herself through such pain. Basically, it boils down to life is worth living, and even if you have resurrection protocols, and even if you've defeated death, you still gotta live life to the fullest. Because once you start using resurrection as a band-aid for all of your problems, then you've really started to screw up and really become something weird and otherworldly. Now, once the virus is actually extracted from Storm, the problem isn't done yet. Again, the virtual reality world means that this thing could actually propagate and become more of a problem unless Cypher manages to lock it down, which he does. And you know, I'm sure this thing will never be a problem again. They'll just leave it in the world and wash their hands of all of it. And hey, speaking of things being left in the world, Phantom X decides if he can't get his brother to leave with him, he's just gonna stay inside the world with him and help him out on whatever his mission may very well be. In fact, Ned also decides to stay behind, telling the mutants to keep his money and spend it, just don't give it to charity. And yeah, believe it or not, that's actually more or less where the comic comes to a close. There is a bit of a stinger where we see Cypher actually talk to the virus, and we're led to believe that it may actually be more intelligent and more familiar than he let on. But believe it or not, that is basically where the comic comes to a close. And so that was Giant-Sized X-Men Storm issue number one. And honestly, I had really high hopes for this series. It had been teed up so great in the previous Phantom X issue. Though ultimately, I was kind of let down just by how easy it was to solve everything. I certainly appreciate the lampshade hanging from Hickman and company, where it's like, yeah, just because the mutants can bring themselves back from death doesn't mean death isn't still a horrible, scary thing that they want to try and stop at all costs. And despite all the very interesting stuff that they create here with Phantom X and his brother and the world, none of it ultimately ended up being important in this story. I mean, I'm sure it'll probably end up being important later, but right now I'm just kind of left feeling a little cold. Ultimately, I'd give this one a 7 out of 10. It moves at a good pace. It certainly looks nice. But we've seen these giant-sized X-Men be more creative, more interesting, and more compelling than this. Hey there, everyone. It's your old pal, Cave Drill, and if you're 
you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content, too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and, well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.